Hey, this is Brock Amir with Embedded Systems Design. We're looking at the I squared C peripheral on the MSP430. In this video, we're going to do a program example where we write multiple bytes of data, in fact, three bytes of data, to a specific starting register at address on the slave. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, here is our task. We are going to do this. We're going to create a packet, a message, that is going to address a slave with a hard-coded address of 68. That happens to be our Adafruit real-time clock that's sitting out there. And then we are going to put, initiate a write, and we are going to send the register address, and then we're going to send 3344 and 55. So in total, our message will actually look like it has four pieces of data. But the way that this is interpreted per the real-time clock data sheet is that the first piece of information is the register address. And so then after that, every byte that is written goes to the next address in the real-time clock. So for example, we're going to write 33 to register address 3. Then it's going to increment this 44 will go into register address 4. And then this 55 will go into register address 5. And that auto increment within the real time clock is handled for us automatically. Okay, so here is our board setup. We've got the MSP430 right here. We're coming off of the B0 per, uh, I squared C peripheral pins. Um, they are wired over to the real time clock. We get plus 3.4 in ground from here. And then here's our little uh, logic analyzer probe that we built so that we can look at the I squared C message using the analog discovery. If you don't, don't know how to set this up or you don't have it set up, refer to our prior video where we actually did this and let's get going. So here is the block diagram of the MSP430 I squared C system. Let's quickly go through what we need to configure. First of all, of course, you put it in the software reset so that we can configure it. Then we need to set up the clock. We're gonna, again, we'll do a 100 kilohertz uh, SCK clock and we'll choose SM clock as our bitrate clock and then we'll divide it by 10 to get 100k and then we need to set up the the slave address so we need or the whole thing so we got to put it in I squared C mode put it into master mode put it into transmit or write mode and then set the slave address register to 68 which is our real-time clock and then we got to figure out how we're going to handle the data transmission we are going to set up an array uh, that'll have four bytes in it. And then we're going to set the transmit buffer or the byte counter uh, to four. And if we use the automatic stop condition, what'll happen is that this state machine will continually pump out data uh, until the byte counter has been, or the value in the byte counter has been reached. So we will set up an interrupt service routine that every time it's the, the buffer is ready for data, uh, it will fire and we will put the next byte of our array into the transmit buffer. And the way that we're going to handle whether it's a register address or a, a piece of data is that we're just going to have the first byte of the array be the register address. So our register will set up an array that has 0, 3 as the first byte, and then we'll have 3, 3, 4, 4, and 5, 5. And so it's, it's relatively simple. Okay, then we gotta choose the port one bit two and three to be the clock and data for my squared C. We take it out of software reset and we will just, we'll manually, again, we'll manually start the transmission. But what we're gonna do is in the interrupt service routine is where we'll continually put four bytes into the transmit buffer. And again, we're gonna use the TXIE interrupt, uh, which is, and that goes to the same vector. Okay, well, we're ready to roll here. Let's pull up CCS and start coding. So we're gonna start a new project and we'll call this, uh, we'll call this C underscore, uh, let's see, what do we wanna call this? We wanna call this, um, <clears throat> action. Okay, so we'll name this C underscore I to C underscore transmit two for our second transmit example. Master, uh, right, reg and three three bytes <laughs> and three bytes okay so we got our little project going here all right so let's uh go ahead and nuke that comment header right there and then we'll come down here and let's start off by setting up b0 for i to c c okay so first thing we want to do is put into software reset 
And we do that by setting the UC, UC software reset bit in the UCB0 CTLW0 register. We're going to set a bit called UC software reset. Okay. Now, I'm going to do something uh, I haven't done before, but this is going to speed this up considerably. I'm going to copy UCB0 CTLW0. That register is going to be used for a whole lot of settings, and it's just going to make things go a little bit quicker. Okay, so anytime I need it, I'm just going to pop it down. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, choose SM clock, and the way we do that is we set the bit uh, in this register, see how fast it was? We're gonna go ahead and set uh, with a mask UCSSEL underscore three, and that chooses SM clock. And then we will, we gotta get the prescale divider. So we go ahead and write 10 to the UCB0 bit rate word control register. So we go ahead and slap that in there. So a set prescaler to 10. All right, and now let's come down here and we'll put into I2C mode by setting the UC mode bit. And so I'm gonna set the UC mode underscore three bit, bit and that, that, that mask is going to put into, set those bits to one one, which is I squared C. And then what we'll do is put into master mode and we do that by setting the UC MST bits. So we go ahead and set the UC MST bits and uh, all right, okay. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into transmit or write mode. And so we will put into write mode, transmit mode. And then we do that by setting the UCTR bits. And so I go ahead and set the UCTR bits. And then finally, we go ahead and set the slave address. So slave address to 0x68, which is the hard-coded slave address for the real-time clock. So I go ahead and go into UCB0 and it is I2C slave address. And I go ahead and just pump 68 hex into that and that sets the slave address, okay? All right, so life is good. And now let's go ahead and set up the whole uh, data transmission approach. So we are going to uh, set auto stop. So we're gonna configure that. And that is actually gonna be in the control word one register. And this bit is right here, <clears throat> and it's going to be UCASTP auto and underscore two. And so bit setting one zero binary means auto stop mode, and that mean that just means that an auto stop will be generated when we do UCB zero. This is the byte counter, so TB C and T. And I'm going to do this for right now. Okay, so at this point, <clears throat> let's set up our array. Okay, before we configure the ports. And I stop right here because uh, I can kind of make this kind of uh, agnostic to the size of the packet. So I'm gonna set up a global variable and I'm gonna call it car and I'm gonna call it, it's a packet. And, and I do car because I want eight bits, okay? And then I'm naming it packet and then I'm just gonna uh, load it up with some hex characters. So the first one's gonna be 0x03 and the next one's gonna be 0x33, 0x44, and then 0x55, okay? And so I load that up, and what that does is it sets up an array that's got four values in it, and we're gonna pump these out, one, two, three, four. Notice, though, that the first, first value is going to correspond to the register address that we wanna to write to, which is three. And then it will, and that's how it's the slave interprets it. And then we'll just pump out three, three, four, four, five, five, and that will go into register address three, register address four, register address five. We need a uh, a index counter to kind of track where we are in the packet sending. So let's go ahead and make something called like int, and then data cnt, and we'll initialize it uh, just because we can. Now the reason I did that is because if you come down here, I want to know how many bytes to put into the byte counter. Well, I can now use this uh, function in C called size of, and if I then give it packet, uh, this now is pretty awesome because I could just conceivably change the size of the packet or change, yeah, you know, just add information uh, to the packet and it would automatically update the byte counter. So this is the number of bytes in packet, okay? All right, so that's cool, so that's ready to go. Now we're ready to do the ports next, so config ports, and we gotta do the port 
function select bit. So uh, we want P1 bit 3 is equal to SCL. So that's clock. So we'll come down here and we'll go port 1, SCL 1. And we need to clear the bit 3. And then below it, we're going to port 1, select 0 register. And we are going to set bit 3. Okay. So that's going to set up the clock. And I'll copy and paste. We need to do the data now. And so I'm going to come down here. Port 1 bit 2 is SDA. So that's the data. The only thing I need to change is 2, 2. And now the last thing I need to do to configure the ports is turn the I.O. system on. So port power module 5, control register 0. And I need to clear the lock low power mode 5 bit. So this is turn on I.O. <clears throat> okay. So now we're ready to roll, and I need to take this out of software reset. So I go ahead and copy that little buddy up there. And we will then, uh, instead of setting that bit, I'm going to clear that bit. So I go ahead and take out of take out of software reset. And now we're essentially ready to roll. We can uh, now we're, we get to set up the interrupt. So the peripheral is set up to go. And now let's set up the interrupts. So I'm gonna go uh, enable IRQs. And the first one we want, or the only one we want is UCB0 IE, and that's the register. And within there, I'm gonna set this bit, UCTX0. And that is going to be, no, it's UCTX IE. Okay, so this is the uh, local enable for uh, TX buff. Okay, and what that means is that when you're just sending a normal bit, a more normal message, uh, when the transmit buffer is ready for information, it'll go ahead and assert this. Okay, so let's now turn on maskable. So I'm going to interrupt, and this should turn purple if it recognizes it. So then enable maskables, and it's not purple. There it is. Okay, good. Now I feel better. All right. So now everything's set up. Uh, I don't think I forgot anything. So now let's go and do our main program, and here's what we're going to do. So this is now our main. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go while one, and I am going to start a message, and then I'm going to delay a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to start a message by by setting the start bit in the UC B0 control word register one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say UC uh, TX STT. Okay. So that is going to this generates the start. So start message. And that's the start bit. Okay. All right. So I do that. And then I want to just delay a little bit. So let's just do our for loop standard delay. So let's go i is equal to zero. And then i is less than 100. i is equal to i plus one. And then we'll do nothing. So delay. And of course, I just set up a new variable. So I got to int i. And we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so then that is our entire setup. So now we're sit, we're feeling pretty good. The only thing now we need to do is write our interrupt service routine. So let's come down here and we'll write our interrupt service routine. So this is our ISRs. And here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start talking to the compiler. Compiler, pragma, that means I'm setting up the interrupt vector for uh, EUSCI underscore B0 underscore vector and put in there the starting address of the following routine. Interrupt, meaning it's an interrupt service routine, and I'm not not returning anything, E-U-S-C-I underscore, this is a name I'm making up, so I squared C, I-S-R, and I'm not sending anything in, and there we are. <clears throat> so now here we are in our interrupt service routine, and we're finally thinking about the functionality. So this statement let's type out the main statement that we're doing it's going to be to put something in the transmit buffer so it's going to be ucb0 tx buff and i'm going to drop in data and the data that i drop in is something from the array i set up called packet and i want to input the data at the index that is held in data count so this is the main uh, the main statement that we're trying to do so let's look at <clears throat> some logic on how we figure out if we are at the, you know, at the end of the packet, have we sent everything out or are we, you know, what are we doing here? Okay. So the, we're going to, 
do this logic a little bit differently than in the past. Sometimes in the past, what had happened is when we got to the end or the last byte in the packet, we would then like disable the interrupt. Well, in this situation, we don't actually have to do that because the message will stop once it's sent four bytes, no matter what. So the logic that we have to put in here is when we go through this interrupt service routine four times, we know it's gonna, the message is gonna stop. So what we have to do is prepare for the next message. So we have to actually put data count back to zero. So that's the logic we're really after, okay? So here's kind of, <clears throat> here's what we're gonna do. So consider this logic. I'm gonna say if data count is equal to the last, to a value that corresponds to the last byte in packet. And I can code that by saying, I want to say size of packet, which we know is three minus one. And so that index, so if data count is equal to three, so data, size of packet minus one, four minus one is three. So if it's at three, it's pointing to the last byte in our array. And we know that we want to send that. So we definitely want to send that. Okay, so we want to send it, but we want to do something else too. We want to do this. We want to say, boom, send it. But now I know that this will be the last time that I send anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say data C and T equals zero. And that will put the index variable back to the starting value so that the next time a message starts, it will be pointing to the first byte of information in our array, okay? Now let's do this. Let's go otherwise data count is either equal to zero, one or two. And what do we do there? Well, the same thing, we wanna pump whatever byte we're pointing to into the transmit buffer, but since we're not at the end, we wanna go ahead and increment data count. And so here's how this works. The first time it fires, data count will be zero. It comes in and says, are you equal to three? No, you're not. Okay, go ahead and send the information at index zero, go ahead and increment the data count to one, okay? Comes back, the slave acknowledges, comes in and says, oh, data count, you're equal to one. Uh, are you equal to three? No, you're not, jump down here, go ahead and send the information at index one of packet, increment data count to two, and the slave acknowledges. It comes back in, now data count is at two. It says, are you equal to three? It says, nope, jumps down here. Sends the information at index two of packet, increments data count to three. The slave acknowledges, comes in and says, data count, you're three, are you equal to three? It says, yes. Okay, well, I know, I still need to send you, but I'm now gonna put you back to zero so that when this, this message ends, then, I will be ready to send, or I will be pointing to the first byte uh, in the packet array for the next message. Again, we don't have to worry about the when to end the message, it's done by these two commands. So as soon as four bytes of information have been sent, the stop bit will be generated. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire that up. And, uh, first, we'll see how many typos we got. Boom, boom. And no typos, awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and run it. And now we say uh, it's running, but how do we actually look at this? Well, we're gonna come in here to our logic analyzer. Let's go ahead and run the logic analyzer. Where is it? Uh, and here we are, and I have it set up from last time. So I'll, I'll, I'll add it so you can see it, but even though that was working, I uh, go ahead and uh, add I squared C bus, data zero, logic channel zero is on clock, logic one is on data, address is seven, format hex, I do that. I set my protocol to I squared C, start bit. I say, okay, oh my goodness. Look at what I'm seeing. This logic analyzer, let me zoom out. It's pumping packets. Message, 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 message. These messages are a little bit bigger than normal because we are sending four bytes. Look at this. Start bit, slave address of 68, right bit, then the slave acknowledges. Then I send three, I get an ACK. Then I send three, three, then I send, you know, I get an ACK. Four, four, ACK, five, five, ACK, and then guess what, a stop bit. Let's see, I want that on the screen because that's such an awesome, that is so cool. Look at how awesome that is. Now, we really are doing something cool. We are actually going to register address three, which happens to be the, the second field, and we're writing 33. Then we allow the, real-time clock to automatically increment its its register counter. So it then goes to four and we write four, four there. And then it automatically increments and we write five, five. So this goes to address three, this go, register address three, this goes to register address four, this goes to register address five. So that is pretty awesome. So we're actually initializing the second minute and hour fields of the real-time clock. That is 
Awesome. All right, congratulations. You have done it. As always, remember, support my channel by subscribing.